Hello, welcome everyone. Today, your tip of the day is relating to Fa Jing and the Yang Lu Chan's form, or any Taiji form, any Bagua form. It's just Fa Jing in general, really. What I want to tell you is stop it. Just, just stop it. Take your Fa Jing, throw it out the window. Fa Jing by definition, is the highest level of advanced striking. It is the absolute pinnacle of striking. And I think my father made a mistake. Oops, oops, I said Earl Montague made a mistake. That's going to get me in trouble. But in my opinion, he did. He made a mistake by telling everyone to do Fa Jing, or to try to do Fa Jing, by even calling the movements Fa Jing movements, you've already started a path down the wrong track. Because you've got stark beginners with the concept trying to do Fa Jing. We don't want them to be trying to do Fa Jing. You can't, you can't try to do Fa Jing. You can only do Fa Jing. You have to know how to hit first. So if we take it to just basic striking, for example, I can stand here, okay, close range sort of stuff, and I can go, okay, and punch that very violently and explosively. But when you take a beginner and try to get them to Say, okay, right, so we've got to wave the body and pull the hip back at the last minute. And all, I'm not going to teach you Fa Jing, of course, on this video. But if you try to t explain to them all the stuff that's happening when you do Fa Jing, even just this concept of throw the waist through and, you know, turn it back on contact. You, you get beginners and they're trying to sort of go like this. Because they don't even know how to punch yet. You have to be able to stand there and just go like that. You've got to be able to punch first. You have to understand the throw before you can even begin to look at the snap and the recoil. Okay? So, this really applies to everything, as I say, everything to do with Fa Jing. Whether you're doing it in the form, or whether you're doing it in your martial drills, on your bag, wherever. So let's take Yang Luchan's form, for example. So, you know, maybe you're doing the little gather, gather, gather at the end of the first third. Okay, so you've got this thing going on, right? And then you do your Fa Jing. Okay? But again, if you're a beginner, you shouldn't even be trying to do Fa Jing. You should be going, you should do, you gather. You still want to get a sensation of release, a sensation of something different than the slow movements, not even just a fast movement. You want a something about ah on the end of that posture. But we do not want to try to understand this hip shaking action. We'd want something more like just that, just turn the body, just throw a punch, a normal punch. So in the same way that I hit the bag just now. So essentially what I'm saying is, unless you are at a very advanced level, and you can't put a time frame on it, um, I am soon going to recalibrate our WTBA grading system so that people sort of have an idea that, okay, once you've done these steps, that's roughly when you should start looking at the concept of Fa Jing. But as it stands at the moment, most people, they start learning Fa Jing, or think they are, when they get to the very first Fa Jing movement in Yang Luchan's form, or one of the first Fa Jing moves in the Bagua form, and so on. They're trying to do Fa Jing before they can even throw a basic punch. So if you're standing in front of your bag, and you're going like, and you, you don't really know how to hit at all from a basic striking sense. And what I mean by basic striking is 
Pushing from the heel, turning your hip, turning your waist, boom. No concept of snapping that back. I'm not creating a whip. That's really, I mean, there's a lot more to it, but on a simple term, that's the difference between a normal punch and a Fa Jing punch. When I do a normal punch, do it this way so you can see a bit better. Everything's going the same direction, you see? My leg pushes, my hip turns, my waist turns, everything's going the same direction into the, into the target. When I do a Fa Jing punch, you can't really notice it much when it's done fast, but if you get a slow motion camera and film it, I've done this before in the past, if I, I'll, I'll exaggerate it a little so you can see. It's like everything moves like this in a waving action, but then just as the hand hits, see how, see how the hip and the waist are actually starting to pull back the other way? So they're, they're creating that, that coil upon contact. It has a number of benefits. It generates more power over a close range, um, but also causes you to be recoiled as you hit the punch, rather than sort of hitting it and then recoiling. So it's got some really, really great benefits uh, being able to understand that. But you need to be able to do that first. Just a simple punch. Just basic, simple coordination and knowing how to turn the body and connect those movements into your fist. If you start worrying about pulling that hip back upon contact before you've even barely mastered the concept of a simple forward pushing punch, you're only going to hinder your own progress. You're going to take a hell of a lot longer. You may never even get there. Most of the time when I see people doing Fa Jing or saying they're doing Fa Jing, they're using way too much tension. Um, and even if they're not using a lot of tension, maybe they've got a loose body and they sort of think they're getting something there and it looks okay on the surface. But Fa Jing done incorrectly takes your power away from the punch. It doesn't add to it. Because if the timing is just a little bit out, if I, if I throw my body like that and I pull the body back too soon, then the power doesn't go in, you see. This is why you need to understand how to hit something just from that very basic sense. Just a really simple sense of just throwing your arm into the bag before you even look at it. So have a think about that. Can you hit well? Can you throw a decent punch? When you throw that punch, is it just coming from the arm? Or can you feel that nice connection or oh, right down to the tip of that toe on the back foot? <laughs> Right? Can you throw a good punch? And if so, okay, maybe you can start looking at Fa Jing and the training methods to lead you up to it. Hello, Clara. Um, but if not, if you can't throw a really good punch, then forget about Fa Jing. Throw it out. You're not even allowed. It's, it's, it's the name who shall not be said. Okay? Oh, is that a Fa Jing? <laughs> Slap. You know those Batman comics? Slap the person every time they mention the term Fa Jing, unless they can punch, unless they already know how to punch. Now, to go on a little bit further from that, you've still got to make sure that when you do your simple punching, we want to do our simple punching in a way which will naturally develop eventually into Fa Jing. Ra <laughs> Hello, Clara. Rather than just doing any, any old punch. So if you do your simple push through kind of punch in a certain way, it's still very simple. It's still relatively easy to achieve and to get good power from it. But when you then add the extra elements of your Fa Jing, it'll all come very, very naturally. So what do I mean by that? Simply following through or not following through. So you don't have to snap back. You don't have to recoil. You don't have to do any of this pulling back stuff in order to be not following through. Okay, I'm gonna show you now. I'll do it this side again so you can see a little better. I'm just gonna throw a simple punch like that. And I'm gonna follow through, okay? 
Yes? What do you want? You want your luggage? Yeah. Okay. There you go. There's your luggage. Um, right, where were we? Sorry. So I'm pushing through. Notice what happens to my hand and, and my body and everything upon contact of the bag. This would, I would consider this to be a poor quality punch by any means. Okay, so I'm going to use a nice big long distance, huge big movement punch to show you so that you can see the difference. Here comes the, the pushing through punch. <sighs> see that? <sighs> see how I'm holding my fist on the bag at the end? I'm getting that nice impact happening, but then as soon as I've made the impact, I'm holding that pressure on the bag. Why am I doing that? What benefit is that possibly giving me? The only thing that could maybe do under a certain circumstance is if you want the person to move backwards, which is not going to be the case in nine times out of ten. But I don't know, you want to hit him and you notice that there's a chair behind him, so you want him to fall over the chair or something. So for the most part, when we hit someone, we don't want them to fall backwards because that just makes it gives them more time to recover. If you can hit them with maximum power, but just cause that, rather than causing this, causing their body to move back, yes? You want me to help you open it? Um, what happens then is you're simply giving them time to react, uh, time to get their balance back and so on. So now watch the same punch. I'm gonna do exactly the same punch, but as soon as I hit the target, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to pull back. I'm not going to pull my hand back or whip my wrist, waist back or anything like that. I'm simply going to throw everything towards that thing as hard as I possibly can. But as I hit it, <laughs> see what's happened on the end? Look. So I haven't done anything else. I haven't pulled my hand back or I haven't done anything else. But you can see the difference there. There's pressure holding pressure or huh. see I'm not doing far jing I'm only turning one direction but as soon as I contact the bag I simply relax my body Whoa. relax you'll notice that I'm getting just as much power going into the bag the bag is vibrating just as much the only difference is it's not holding now this is a really heavy bag so I'm not able to push it backwards plus also it's actually on the ground that's stopping it from moving backwards as well. If I did this on a smaller bag, you would see the difference a little more because when I hit the smaller bag, you'd see the bag really move backwards, right? Whereas when I do bah! that punch, you'd see the bag shake more. Yes? Do you want me to do it up again? Um, so, yeah, any punches you're doing, this, this literally applies to every punch or kick or literally every strike. Here comes the elbow strike. If we're going to do the elbow strike, I'm not going to go, you see? Oh, there, there. See, I could show it with the elbow because the elbow's stronger. See how the bag actually moved backwards? Right, so I'm going to hit it with my elbow. You see? See how much I'm moving the bag? Why would I want to do that? A, it's, a, it's not adding any power into the movement, but the main thing is I'm, I'm not going to get that progression into, into Fajing. Hang on just a second, Clara. I'm almost finished, okay? Now I'm going to do the same elbow again, but I'm going to do that thing. I'm going to throw my body at it, hit the target, but as soon as I hit it, I stop moving. Ready? You see? The bag still moved a little bit, but not right up against the bar. You see? That's the idea I want. Oh, I'm sometimes doing a little bit of fudging on the end there, just naturally, because that's what my body wants to do. Wait a minute, Clara, I'm almost finished. So, yeah, just take any strikes you're doing, back fist strike. Whoa. You see, instead of holding it there. So no matter what punch you're doing, bang. Just relax it. Relax it. Relax it. You don't have to pull it back, but you don't want to push it through either. Um, now, at least in your arm, however, you should really, even from the beginning, um, I guess if you're a total beginner and you've never done anything and you just want to get that idea of just throwing out, then that's okay for a sort of a step one. But ultimately, you never want 
Come on, you can go through. You never want to leave your hand somewhere. So this really applies to everything. There's a few exceptions. Sometimes you might want to leave your hand out there for a certain reason. But generally speaking, when you punch someone in the face, I don't want to go and leave my hand there, do I? Because it can't do anything in that position. It's vulnerable itself. It could break my arm, it could lock my wrist, it could do all sorts of things to me. So it's vulnerable. My hand is extended, therefore my guard is open. When my hand is retracted, I'm much more covered from stopping myself getting hit. And when my hand is extended, how am I supposed to hit him from here? <clears throat> I can do something, but that's not a good punch. It's, you know, you can, if it's right in the eye or the neck, maybe something. But why would you leave your arm extended? You want to let it recoil back in. That doesn't necessarily mean coming all the way back to here, right? Like, you know, that really closed bo boxer type of guard. Wherever your guard happens to be, you want to <clears throat> bring it back again, bring it back again bring it back again. But see, it's relaxed. I'm not going uh, uh, like, uh, I'm not using tension. I'm just throwing it out, letting it, letting it hit the bag. And then see that? It's just nice and loose the way it comes back. See that? It just, that's just the arm coming back. It's not because I'm doing any fancy far jing or anything. That's just literally extending the arm and just, just pulling at the lats and drawing the drawing the arm back in. The next tip of the day, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that concept, how to correctly pull the arm and not dropping your guard and that kind of stuff. So that's one thing to think about. If you're not a really seasoned, advanced WTBA instructor, you shouldn't even be looking at Fa Jing. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoy your day.